What's going on, everybody? John Eric Poli here with my MMA news, and today I am joined by the PFL European Lightweight Champion Jakob Kashuba. Jakob, nice to see you, man. Thanks for doing this, man. Really appreciate the time. Thank you for inviting me, John. It's an honor. So, man, first off, I gotta say congratulations on winning that title. Uh, obviously, now you're gonna get to go to the uh, PFL, the main global roster there, which is awesome. So. You know, just being the champ, winning the money that you got to win, has all of that all sunk in? Uh, it is not, honestly. Uh, I don't know. It's kind of like or like a different life. Uh, I'm enjoying it, but it still doesn't seem real to me, you know, and I'm just trying to heal out, but I'm just thinking of the next training cycle, even though, you know, it hasn't hit me that I might be fighting in the global PFL tournament for $1 million. I'm just in the mindset of like, okay, let's heal up and get ready for the next fight camp, you know? And I say, well, of course it's not really going to sink in for you either when you got to immediately get right on a plane and fly back to Florida because you have to go and get ready for work and everything. What, what, what do you do for your other job? I'm an auditor for the state of Florida. So uh, we audit schools and universities. So, well, so you're, keep, uh, yeah, you're keeping yourself busy. Yeah, so it's a, it's a nice job. I love it. It's, uh, you know... It, so not, you know, it's like a nine-hour job, but I get to start it early and finish it early and then still have time to train and do my, uh, and, you know, I still have time to go home, be with my wife, and overall, I'm very, very happy. So uh, it, it makes, it, it works with what I do, which which makes me very happy. Well, that's good to hear that it does. And I mean, hopefully one day, I'm sure the plan is going to be to become a full-time fighter, so... <laughs> Let's yes. talk a little bit here about just the fight career. We'll talk about this tournament uh, itself, yeah. and we'll talk about the uh, title fight that you had where you won this championship here. You had to come uh, overcome a little bit of adversity within the fight. I know you were knocked down early. You had to wrestle your way out of it. Uh, just what was kind of going through your mind when all that's going on there? Was there ever a moment or, uh, of doubt, or did you know, you know, I'm not hurt, I'm going to get through this, and I'm going to get this job done here? Uh, well, uh yeah, I was, uh, the front kick is what hurt me. So I remember getting hit with the front kick, like, oh, my legs are giving out, you know? And uh, I felt in danger there. Uh, then he threw that uppercut, and the uppercut hit, but it didn't really hurt. But I just immediately went after he threw that uppercut. I decided to bounce off the cage and go for, for a takedown. But he hit me with that right hand, which was clean, but it didn't, it didn't, it didn't drop me. It, uh, like, I, you know, I remember everything vividly, right? Uh, so that right hand hit me, but I went immediately for a takedown and, uh, just to make sure that he wouldn't be able to follow up, uh, after that front kick. Cause that really hurts. That, that got me wobbled, but the uppercut and the right hand, uh, they were powerful, but they weren't, uh, nowhere near, uh, as stunning as the front kick. And then, you know, I, I went in for the takedown and he sprawled and I was just kind of happy to sit there. And then I got back up. I heard I held him for a couple of uh, seconds just to make sure that I'm really okay, and then once he disengaged from the clinch, uh, I knew we were okay because I threw a right hand, full power, and I uh, hit him, and uh, you know I didn't feel like uh, it was delayed. I didn't feel like uh, you know I placed I hit him where I wanted like I placed it I hit him where I wanted to place it, so I knew everything was okay by the end of the first round after. Uh, after we disengaged from that clinch. But that front kick had me worried for a second because my legs were given out. <laughs> and I know you had mentioned after the victory, too, when you were inside the cage, you said there was a moment where you realized that your opponent was starting to fade and didn't have the gas tank to get through it. And that's kind of where you knew you had the fight in the bag there. Just what was it that he did that made you realize that he was fading and that you had him right where you wanted him? Well, I remember beginning of the second round... Uh... I looked across the cage, and for a guy who, you know, om who almost, I mean, he was close to finishing the fight, but he hurt me, you know, for hurting me. He didn't seem all that confident and powerful to uh, to finish the job beginning of the second round. And uh, after the first round, my coach told me that, you know, it's urgent that I go forward and that we we can really press press on him because he's not trying to wrestle us. And we won't go into his level change. So I really decided to go forward hard and uh, do all my strikes. And when I was hitting him, I could see it in his face. Like when I threw more than uh, two two punches and I hit him with, with three or four punch uh, combination and two of them hit his face, I could see he was in pain. 
uh, and he was getting worried and he was backing up a lot. So I was like, okay, he's kind of breaking down. Uh, and then he clinched me on the cage and I just felt so much stronger than him, you know? So uh, I don't know why he gasped, if it was bad preparation or nervousness or my punches did that much more damage. But uh, I just knew, like, beginning of the second round, I felt so strong. I was like, I can do three, four more rounds. I'm like, we're going to press this guy now, you know? All right. I'm so glad that you brought about how great you felt afterwards and how you felt you could go three, four, five more rounds there because I wanted to ask you, right, just, uh, you know, the way the PFL has their seasons and that constructed, it's it's a lot to win these tournaments. It really is. You, you're, you're fighting, you know, three, four times within a few months span there. Just how is the body feeling after going through that whole entire tournament? Obviously, I'm sure you feel great that you got the win there, but how does the body feel after getting all those fights in a short period of time? Uh, well, it's what I like about this format is it's uh, it really focuses on the sportsman because you got to do everything correctly. You got to wake up correctly. You can't balloon up in between fights. Uh, now it's nice because I won't be fighting till March, so I'm up up to 190, 195. Uh, so it's nice. I get to enjoy myself. But, you know, after the first and second fight, it was... Uh, between the first and second fight, it was nice because that was a 12-week uh, break in between. So you could have a week of chill and then one lighter week in the cycle. Uh, but this, you know, the second to third fight, that was like 10 weeks. So it was back to a hard camp and uh, there was no light. There was one lighter week in between for me. And um, so, yeah, you just have to know how to carry yourself, count your calories, recover well, have a good training regimen, not overwork yourself. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's what I really like about this cycle is it's you got to be smart. And you got to know how to carry yourself for a long time. And it's not one fight every six months, right? And you can balloon up to 200 pounds and have some crazy weight cut, right? This is everything's got to be planned and executed nicely. And just out of curiosity, too, being uh, that it was a tournament, was there a favorite moment for you during the tournament? Or was it pretty much all business? Nothing really stuck itself out? Uh, well, I love Dublin and... and 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 berlin they were great cities i really enjoyed myself there uh well berlin was kind of stressful because i was my first time going overseas and you know living in the hotel and trying to figure out a system how to do my food and the travel uh but all in all i love dublin uh paris was a great run event but i did not like paris it's just too too it, it was a big city so they had two buses around everywhere and uh it was just hectic, a lot of people, but Dublin was great. I really loved Dublin. Everyone spoke English. Uh, there was good food. Uh, hotel was nice. It was close to the venue. So I think, I think I really enjoyed Dublin just for the location and how it was run. And all the kinks of the tournament in Europe seemed to be figured out by then. All right. It was pretty interesting here. You said that you didn't like Paris that much. For uh, according, I usually hear a lot of people say good things about Paris. I've never, I didn't realize it was like obviously it was a big city, but the travel and everything—that's absolutely crazy. There were buses taking you guys everywhere and everything. Yeah, because the we were pretty much in uh, northwestern Paris in Port Clichy, like the outskirts of it. It wasn't actually Paris, where a hotel was, and the venue and a lot of the media were down. We're done in downtown, which is like five miles. And in Paris, five miles is, is a long way. <laughs> it's like 40-minute Uber or a 40-minute bus. Uh, and then the arena was in eastern eastern outskirts of Paris. So it was all very far far apart. Uh, and, you, you know, you couldn't walk there. Or uh, metro is actually the best way of traveling. But then you're just stuck in the metro. You don't really see anything, right? Uh but yeah, you know, I'm not there for vacation, right? If I was there for vacation, it'd be a different, uh, different review. <laughs> uh, I was there on business, and I just want everything to be easy. And with Paris, you know, when I do my grocery shopping, especially, it's not they ain't the best. Uh, they ain't the best with English, so so it's uh, it was a hustle trying to figure everything out. Well, next year, you probably won't have to worry about any of that because you'll be a part of the PFL um, with the Global Series there. Uh, probably won't be having a lot of those international-type fights there. Uh, so I want to actually go there next with that being the next step. I mean, I guess how excited are you to be a part of that You know, main roster, get to compete for that $1 million tournament and uh, everything that takes place within uh, the whole PFL organization that we've gotten to know and love over the years? 
Yeah, well, we actually are not, we don't know yet what's going to happen because with this Bellator okay. manager, uh, there's a lot of things that are up in the air because we don't know how, how many Bellator fighters will go into the PFL tournament. And, you know, some of them might get dibs. Uh, so uh, it's going to be hard to get a place on uh, on the roster, I believe. But I, I hope uh, PFL will let me decide, right? And I can decide if I want to, def- you know, defend my title in Europe or or fight here in the USA. But Or whatever they decide, I'll be happy with. I'm just happy to have a fight lined up, you know? Uh, but if I get to fight in the global, yeah, that'll be great. I mean... I'm on top of my game, and I'm gonna continue winning. And if you give me an opportunity for the one million dollars, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go far, and I'm. I feel strong and confident after this tournament. I really grew as a fighter these uh, this year, and I really think I can win it. If they give me a chance, I think I can. I can win the one million dollar tournament. And I, I'm glad you brought up this whole merger with Bellator and everything. It's funny. It seems like just from yeah you know, talking to fighters, whether it be part of the PFL or speaking with. Uh, fighters that were under the Bellator banner. It seems like there's not really a clear direction as to what's kind of next going on here. Have yeah. you've gotten any word as to when exactly there's going to be some sort of announcement and figuring out what exactly is going on here? Or is it still everything kind of up in the air, playing it by ear? Whatever's going to happen, it's going to happen probably at the end of the year or in the beginning of this new year. Because, uh, yeah, there's everything's up in the air. I wish I knew, but... The, the point is that the next week I start swimming, and then week after that I go back to my life training. So uh, that's all that I really know. <laughs> and then January I start a, a camp, you know, camp back up with a hard weight cut, and uh, yeah. All right. Well, hopefully you do get to be a part of that uh, PFL Global because uh, you're definitely, I think, a hundred percent deserving to be a part of that tournament, especially after what you just did in this European tournament. That's for sure. There. Uh, but I do want to ask you a few things, maybe just outside the cage. You know, you were recently uh, married. Well, how's marriage life been? Oh, I love it. Uh, it's it's uh, it's nice. I don't know. Just it's like uh, it's only a formality because we've lived together for so long uh, and we've been together for so long. But it's nice to have an official stamp, and uh, it just feels more official. And as a result, our roles as husband and wife are more official. So I really like it. And how did you uh, come over here to the United States? What made you come over here? Was it to pursue uh, the fight game here, or was it something else? Uh, well, my uh, we immigrated here as a family. So it was like uh, I had my ninth birthday when I came over to the States. So I was really to... while. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I was pretty much raised uh, in a Polish household, but in the American environment. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, I consider myself Polish and I will towards, towards the end of my life, but I love the USA and I love everything it has given me. So now when you first went back over to uh, Europe for this PFL tournament, is that your first time you've been back since you were nine? Oh, uh, no, no. We went back. Uh, well, t- <laughs> it took us like 10 years, 15 years to get a, uh, passport. So, uh, and 10 years to get a green card. So after 10 years, we went back for the first, I did. I went back for the first time with my family. And then I, as a, in college, I would go back every summer for a couple of months. Uh, so I've been to, to Poland a lot, but I've never seen any of Western Europe. I, you know, that's my first time in, actually, that was my second time in Germany, but first time in Berlin. I never been to France. So Paris was the first time in France and I never been to Dublin. So it was pretty much my first time seeing Western Europe, which was, uh, which was cool. And it seems like your family, too, is very supportive of you and everything that you've been doing. Like, whenever you post photos on Instagram from fights, there's so many people around you there. What's it like having that big support staff with you? It's cool. My mom and my dad always come, no matter, you know, they got jobs, but, you know, they'll pay $1,000 for or more for a ticket there and back, and they'll always be there. And um, it's cool because a lot of my uh, family from Europe always comes that, that are over there, you know, from Poland. And, uh, you know, some of them live in Germany. Uh, so, you know, they're always relatively close, right? Uh, so anytime we have a fight, they all come down. So it's nice that I get to see them more often and they get to, you know, cheer me on. And earlier today, uh, actually, uh, maybe a few hours right before I had you on, I had your gym owner, Preston Parsons, on. And we oh, were cool. talking a lot about just kind of the growth down there in Jacksonville, Florida. And he said he remembers back when it was 
you know, hardly anybody coming through the gym. Now it seems like you guys are getting so many people through the gym. You guys have a few people on the UFC roster. Mm -hmm. You yourself are very successful within the PFL. Just talk about the growth of not only the gym, but just the sport in general down there in Jacksonville. Yeah, Jacksonville is, uh, it's a tough town. It's a, I'll call it a very middle, middle class, middle class town. And, uh, as a result, there's a very strong work ethic and, uh, and a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of our fighters come from poor communities, but they've risen up uh, to the occasion. They're tough bastards, uh, willing to learn. And uh, it's nice because we work in small groups and we get a lot of individualized coaching. Uh, so we really get to grow, right? It's it's like going to a smaller college or university and having more attention from a teacher, right? And uh, having more open, open conversations with each other about stuff that we did or styles and trying to figure out our opponents. So it's very, uh, I like our group, small group environment that's very flexible and can adapt quickly, right? And there's no, oh, sorry. And there is, uh, there's no egos, which is nice because we've known each other for a very long time, a very long time. All right, man, I've got one last thing that I have to ask since you do come from the Polish background and I'm sure the answer is going to be that you are fans of both of these people, but Obviously, Ioanni and Jacek, Jan Blachowicz did so much for Polish MMA, yeah. uh, you know, representing, obviously, I know they were in the UFC, not the PFL, but still represented just the sport of mixed martial arts so well. And I'm sure you, with the Polish background, have to look up to both of those, uh, both Ioanna and uh, Jan Blachowicz. Yeah, I just want to do what they did. That's 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 all I want for my life. And hopefully I will, I will be able to achieve it. But that's all I want. I'm going to try my everything I will I will do everything to try to be like them. And Joanna is actually from this, from my hometown, Olsen. We're from the same hometown. Oh, no kidding. I, I didn't even realize that. I was just going to ask, like, I know she used to train an American top team. I know it's a bit of a distance from Jack. So I was going to ask you guys if we ran into each other, you know, doing the whole Florida thing there. But I, do you guys know each other pretty well then? Uh, no, no, we do not. We do not. Uh, just come from the same hometown. But uh, I'm uh, I'm in Jacksonville right now, and I never actually visited uh, Coconut uh, Creek down there the uh, the American top team. Uh, hopefully one day in the future, maybe I'll do part of my camp there or a whole camp. But uh, yeah, for now with my job and uh, I like what I have going on here in Jacksonville. My job, it's, it's not really realistic at the moment. Gotcha. Well, man, I, listen, I really appreciate all the time. It's been uh, great talking with you. You have a bright future in front of you. I'm sure we'll be talking a lot as uh, the years go on here, because like I said, this was a, a great tournament for you. I know great things are on the horizon. So congratulations again. Uh, just last thing before you head out for the day, you want to go ahead and plug your social media so people know where to follow you at. And if you have uh, like management or sponsorships, any of that stuff that you got to give shout outs or plugs to, take it away, man. The floor is yours. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, you just follow me on Instagram at Auditor uh, PL, the Auditor PL on Instagram. And then you can find me at uh, on uh, Twitter. At, uh, I'm also. Uh, uh, um, on Twitter, I'm Kielbasa, uh, FL, K-I-E-L-B-A-S-A, FL. Uh, so please follow me there. And uh, at the moment, I have no sponsors to give a shout out, shout out to. But if you want to sponsor me and you're out there listening, I invite you. Uh, hit up my business email at uh, Hussar, H-U-S-S-A-R, L-L-C-M-M-A at gmail.com. Thank you.